what I'm told is that Jadon Sancho has a total agreement about his contract, personal terms with Manchester United. What I know is that the contract of the player is not a problem and Jadon wants to join Manchester United, he's ready to join Manchester United, so the player is okay. The player would like to join Liverpool at the moment, officially, and it also has not started with Bayern Munich. Kai Avers is, is trying to join the, the Premier League club, like in this case of Chelsea, and he wants to leave. And Chelsea are speaking with, with Bayer Leverkusen to find an agreement. At the moment, there is no agreement between clubs. Here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. I hope to say here we go soon for other deals. <laughs> Hello listeners and welcome back to yet again another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. As ever, I'm your host Budge and of course I'm joined by my faithful two co-conspirators Dot and Dej. We have a very, very special uh, episode for you today. We're joined by well-esteemed Sky Sports Italia um, journalist Fabrizio uh, Romano. Before we kick things off with him, just a reminder if you're not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, it's the Beautiful Game podcast. And you can also listen to all of our episodes on Spotify. Um, again, it's the Beautiful Game podcast. So let's get kick, kick, uh, things kicked off. Thank you, Fabrizio. Here we go. Um, Thank, so, you. Thank you. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm so happy to be with you, really. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you. Obviously, you've become this sort of, you know, transfer social media guru <laughs> that when Fabrizio said something, it's correct, it's fact. Thank you. How have you managed to build this sort of profile? Just working. Just working since I was like 17. I started so early and during I was studying in, in Napoli, who is my born city. And then I am in Milano now since 10 years. But I started in Napoli. I started with the first agents of my friends I met in the stadium or something like this. I started from small people, uh, not important people like you can think like Mendes or Rayola immediately. It's impossible, obviously. Yeah. But I started with, uh, with small agents, uh, small directors of small clubs, nothing important. And then you have to be also lucky. It's normal because you have to, to be lucky to, to see when some directors or some agents uh, is going to do an important career, you know, and they develop as, as your same career as journalist. So I've been lucky, but I have always worked at this because I feel I love this game. I love this job. I love to, to speak about transfers. So I don't feel like tired at the end of the day. Also, if I worked about the news all the day or many news all the day, mm. I always go to bed and I say, okay, I'm happy because I'm working for the people. I see the people are buzzing to have news. <laughs> we have updates. And for me, I always say it's like playing a match of football. It's like scoring a goal. All my, all my news when are correct and they say, okay, I scored. I'm happy. And that's my mentality. So I started like this from small people. But if you start with a good idea, with working all day and doing what you love, you can do everything in your life. That's my opinion. No, that's great words. And thank you, Fabrizio, for telling us about the origins of your story. We know you're extremely busy and your time is limited. (laughs) So I'm going to kick things off with, you know, the biggest transfer saga of the summer, Mm -hmm. Jadon Sancho. We've been hearing conflicting reports. People are saying that, you know, Man United don't want to pay exorbitant wages because of obviously what they've done with Alexis Sanchez. But we're also hearing that the deal is basically done. So what's the latest update as you have it right now? What I know, and I'm happy to clarify because many Manchester United fans are asking me all the <laughs> news about, about Jadon, is that the situation is, is not so complicated. I think it's a normal situation when you speak about a top deal like the Jadon Sancho one. So uh, what I'm told is that Jadon Sancho has a total agreement about his contract, personal terms with Manchester United. So... What I know is that the contract of the player is not a problem and Jadon wants to join Manchester United. He's ready to join Manchester United. So the player is okay. It's normal that Manchester United and Borussia Dortmund are speaking about the deal and the, the structure of the deal. So about installments, about add-ons, because it's normal after coronavirus, you have to, to think also about the economical part of the deal. And it's normal that two top clubs like Borussia Dortmund and like Manchester United need time to, to prepare this kind of deal. So they are speaking, they are in talks. We never say, okay, it's done, okay, it's completed, okay, we go, because they are speaking. But we can't say at all, okay, Manchester United are going away, are going on another option. Today, Manchester United are still working to get Jadon Sancho. I can't know what will happen tomorrow because I'm not working for Manchester United or for Borussia Dortmund, but today, as yesterday, as three months ago, Manchester United have Jadon Sancho as their first target and they are working to get him. They are still in talks with Borussia Dortmund. Obviously, 
this kind of deal is like a game, I say, because when you have two top clubs speaking about a top player, you need time, you need to, to pay Manchester United want to pay less than what Borussia Dortmund ask, and the same for Borussia Dortmund want more um, from, from, from Jose Sancho. So it's normal, I think. Um, I want to add that there is no deadline. I never spoke about any deadline because what I'm told is that it's a normal deal and a top deal and we need time. They need time to, to complete this if they will find an agreement between Manchester United and Borussia Dortmund. So there is no deadline in August or something like this. We will see what will happen in the next days, but at the moment the deal is absolutely on. Manchester United are working to get Jadon Sancho. Then we will see if they will find an agreement, total agreement with Borussia Dortmund. So what's the structure of the deal? How is going to be like, what's the down payment? What's the contract? Do this is complicated about, about, the main, about the clubs. It's complicated because they are speaking and changing their minds unlike any hour that after. So it's not, it's not easy to say because uh, the, the total structure of the deal for Borussia Dortmund is they want 120 million euro for Jadon Sancho. Now it's time to see what Manchester United would go to offer to get the player because they were offering like 18 pounds millions. So in this moment, it's not easy to find the total agreement about the standments, how many years you need to pay the player. And also about the add-ons, because Manchester United want to use add-ons. It's normal now. In, in football, it's absolutely normal. And when you sign a player like Jadon Sancho it, with this kind of price of free, it's, it's normal. You need to, to put add-ons. So they are speaking, but the final fee for Bruce Dortmund must be 120 million euro. At the moment, there is no agreement, but they are in talks. And what I am told is that Manchester United are still pushing to get the player. They are not going on another option. So we will see what will happen on the next days. But at the moment, it's not agreed, but they are absolutely in talks. Cool. And Fabrizio, we've, we've had recent uh, rumours um, that uh, uh, Thiago Alcantara has rejected um, uh, a contract from, from Bayern Munich and he's of course been linked heavily with uh, Liverpool. I, I remember the other day I was uh, watching uh, Raf Honigstein speaking about how much of a, a loss this would be not only to, to um, uh, Bayern Munich but to the Bundesliga, so, you know, someone of, of, of that talent. Um, and so I you know, wanted to ask if there was any uh, particular news around um, uh, Thiago. Is Liverpool the only club that's currently interested in him? Are there other potential suitors as well? First of all, I want to say I'm happy you mentioned the good journalist as he is. And, and, and I want to say just a small thing about other journalists because many are saying I am doing a war with English press, with English journalists. <laughs> Nothing like this. I, I, love, I love other journalists like Raj Lafayette, like Christian Falk, like many others also from England. They are fantastic. So I am not to endure war with anyone. I am just working as, as they are. So no problem. And it's important to say because I say people, oh, you are destroying him. <laughs> <laughs> I am not doing well. I am friends with everyone. Okay, and about about Thiago, yes, for sure it will be a, a big loss for Bundesliga. At the moment, the player would like to join Liverpool. This is sure. He would like to, to change, to go in the Premier League. And it's absolutely true what also Christian Polk said about his contract. He refused to, to extend his contract with, with Bayern Munich. So at the moment, he's hoping to join some Premier League clubs. At the moment, I don't have any info about Manchester United or the other clubs. The only one is Liverpool because the player would love to join Liverpool, would love to play with Jurgen Klopp under Jurgen Klopp as manager. So he hopes it can be a possibility. But at the moment, Officially, any talks has not started with Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich hasn't received any bid for Thiago. It's normal. We are in August. Players are, are waiting also because we have the Champions League, we have the Europa League, so it's normal. They need to wait some weeks to see what will happen. We have September. will be a crazy month for transfer market. So we need to wait. I think Thiago will leave Bayern Munich this summer. But at the moment, there is not any bid from Liverpool or another club. So it's just the hope of the player. He would love to play with, with Liverpool, but I think with also many other clubs in the Premier League. But at the moment, not all have started for him. OK, and moving on to, you know, his compatriot, another player from Brazil, you know, Felipe Coutinho. This is a man that made his dream move to Barcelona. And it sort of ended in a nightmare with, you know, the fans booing him, getting on his back. Then he had a loan with Bayern Munich. There's rumours, you know, regurgitating around the press that Arsenal are very interested in signing him. Do you see this as a viable opportunity? He has been offered. 
to, to Arsenal from his agents and the same was for Tottenham some weeks ago. At the moment, Tottenham has not decided to make a bid for, for Coutinho and Arsenal are considering him as an option, but at the moment there is not advanced talks to sign him. They are considering this possibility. At the moment, what I'm told is that Arsenal are concentrated on the William deal. They are speaking with William because he's a free agent, so they can sign him like immediately and he refused the last, last bid from, from Chelsea to extend his contract, so they are concentrated on William in this moment. Then we will see what will happen for Coutinho. For sure, what you said is correct because Barcelona wants to loan off Coutinho. They are considering him like out from their project. So Coutinho will leave Barcelona this summer. We have to see if Arsenal will accept also about the wage because it's an important wage to, mm. to, 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 to pay in, in next season. So they are considering many options for, for, for their attacking midfielders for next season. So at the moment, there are not advanced talks for Coutinho for Arsenal, but he's an option. He has been offered and his agents are working to offer the player to many clubs because he has to leave. He, he can stay in Barcelona where he understood this out from the project. So Barcelona are going to sell many players, I think, this summer. You know what? Sticking with um, Barcelona, what's happening with Anton Griezmann? He's another one that I've heard that, you know, maybe offered out to clubs. What's going on there? I think he will stay. I think he will stay. He's going to... He had a not fantastic season, I think. They were expecting Griezmann to be at the level of Atletico Madrid and he had this kind of a season. He was so normal this season. We expected him like a fantastic player. We know he is, but uh, the season was not so, so good. So I think this summer they will wait for, for Griezmann. They will give him time. One other season as, as Barcelona player, I don't think they will sell him. Also here in Italy, many spoke about an opportunity of, of a swap deal between Griezmann and Lautaro Martinez, but it has never been a real possibility what I'm told so is that Griezmann will stay in Barcelona this summer and, and another one that's um, uh, started to crop up in, in papers more recently um, is the transfer of, or potential transfer of um, Ndombele from, from Tottenham now of course in his debut season at the start of the, 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 the season he was, you know, touted to be one of the signings of, of, of the season. You know, he, had a, he came and arrived in the Premier League with a huge profile. Um, you know, a lot of uh, 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 fans of rival clubs were literally just kicking themselves that they didn't <laughs> sign him, right? And, and of course, he's been out of favour under uh, uh, um, Jose Mourinho. So is there a likelihood that he could um, depart Tottenham this, this summer, Fabrizio? I think there is a possibility. For sure, what I'm told is that Inter are trying. Inter are trying to sign him because they want him. They see him as like their main target as midfielder. So Inter have started also with Tottenham and started offering a swap deal because Inter in this moment can't pay 60 million euro to sign Dombele. So it's like impossible to see the player leaving for 60 million euro as they paid one year ago from, from Olympic Lyon. So at the moment, the situation is that Inter are trying to, to offer a swap deal with Milan Skriniar who is a really good defender. He had some problems with Antonio Conte. And Antonio Conte is key for this kind of deal because, because here in Milano, Inter are having some problems with their manager. Uh, Conte is not so happy of Inter working like a club. He wants more protection. He doesn't feel uh, as he was expecting from, from Inter. So in this moment, Antonio Conte is not sure to stay at Inter for next season. He mm. wants to play the, the match tonight against Getafe and then he will decide after the Europa League what, what will be his future. So, so we will see what Conte will do. But if Conte will stay at Inter, I'm sure and I'm told that Dombele will be the main target for the midfield. Then we will see because, you know, as you said, with Mourinho, the feeling is not so good. So between Dombele and Mourinho, the feeling is, is not good and Mourinho would be open to sell the player. But Daniel Levy, and you know he's <laughs> so difficult to convince when you're going to, to speak about transfers. Daniel Levy said, okay, we paid for this player 60 million euro one year ago. We need 60 million euro. So I don't want to sell a player just after one season. I want to see him. So it's normal. It's not easy to see Ndombele to Inter, but for sure they are trying. We will see what will happen with Conte because Conte will be the key of this kind of deal. Mm, even sticking with Tottenham, uh, I want to talk about their right back, Serge Aurier. There's been reports linking AC Milan with a £20 million pound move. Are those rumours true? Absolutely true. We say it in Sky Italy and I think it's absolutely true because uh, Serge Aurier is the main target for, for Milan as right back and they are considering to, to let them leave one right back they have in their team now and they want Aurier. They have an agreement with the player so personal terms are like ready for Aurier to AC Milan. Then we have to say what will happen between the two clubs because Milan are going to offer 15 million euro um, 15, sorry, 15 million euro and 
Tottenham are going to ask 20 million euros, so there is a small difference, but I'm convinced this is a possible deal. Yes, also because Tottenham are looking on the transfers market about some right back for, for next season. One possible option is Selic from Lille, you know, the right back. Yeah. He's a good player. He's a Turkish player and Jose Mourinho knows him. Um, he could be an option for, for Tottenham if Aurier will leave. But at the moment, Milan are convinced. I've started talks with Tottenham and it's possible Aurier will leave this summer. What's happening with um, Kai Havertz? Um, obviously heavily linked with Chelsea. You've, you know, reported the story excellently. Is that deal looking likely? Needs time. I think it's so similar to Sancho's situation because the player has a total agreement with the club. The player wants to leave. In the case of Havertz, he's really determined to leave the club this summer. He wants to leave. He wants another option. Also because Bayer Leverkusen liver is different from Borussia Dortmund. So you can understand why a player like Kai Havertz is, is trying to join the, the, the Premier League club, like in this case of Chelsea. And he wants to leave. And Chelsea are speaking with, with Bayer Leverkusen to find an agreement. At the moment, there is no agreement between clubs. And the price Tottenham, uh, Tottenham Chelsea are going to offer to, to Bayer Leverkusen is around 18, 80 billion euro. But in this moment, there is no agreement also as for Sancho deal about the installments, about the add-ons. So they are speaking and in the case of uh, Bayer Leverkusen, they also have to play in Europe. So they need time to, to finalize this agreement. I think it's possible that it will be completed on next week because the player really wants to join Chelsea. He's passionate to join Chelsea and Chelsea and Bayer Leverkusen are in contact. So the main target this summer for, for Chelsea after signing Timo Werner, who's been a fantastic signing in my opinion, uh, they are going for, for Kai Avers. Uh, eloquently put yeah I want to stick with Chelsea again we might as well <laughs> I want to talk about their goalkeeping situation obviously Kepa he's rumoured to have not convinced Frank Lampard and there's some reports linking Chelsea with Andre Anana, the Ajax goalkeeper do you think there's something to happen there do you think there's a deal to be had they have a list. They have a list for the goalkeeper and they have to consider if they're going to sign Havers, they can spend money for too, much, too many players like they did for Ziyech, they did for, for Timo Werner, they, did for, they will do, they hope, for, for, for Havers. So if they sign Havers, they have a list and they will consider Onana for sure. Another name is also Pope. I think it's, in the moment it's so, so difficult to see players like Ter Stegen or Black to Chelsea because, as I said, they are going to spend so much for the team this season and to sign a good play, the goalkeeper for 100, 120 million euro is so difficult this season. So uh, Oblak and Ter Stegen are a really difficult, difficult target. But I think Onana is one of the options. He's in the list. We will see what Chelsea will decide about the goalkeeper. As I said for, for Roberts, I say the same for the goalkeeper. It needs time. They, will, they won't sign the goalkeeper tonight or tomorrow. They need time. They are considering many options and they will say, OK, if we sign Roberts, it's possible we will get on a cheaper option for, for, for the goalkeeper. Do you think Kepa will leave then? Yes, this summer? I think yes, yes. Are there any reported clubs that are in for him? Uh, at the moment, nothing, nothing advanced. We have, we have to wait a bit, but what I'm told is that Kepa will not be the goalkeeper of Chelsea next season. Yes. Okay. What Chelsea okay. looking at it from a defensive point of view as well, Fabrizio? Yes. In terms of strengthening you, you their, like, their centre-backs? Or? Yes, left, left back. They will go for a left back. Chilwell? Also, yes, Chilwell is the main option because Frank Lampard is in love with Chilwell football <laughs> and he wants him. But also Leicester are in love with Chilwell because he's a fantastic player. So at the moment there is no agreement. It's so difficult to get Chilwell this summer. But Chelsea have not completed any deal at the moment. For what the, about Taglifico as well from um, Ajax? Is he an option on that, that list? Um, yes, he's also an option, Taliafico for sure, uh, Shieldwood for sure. They also considering Sergio Guillon. He has been offered that okay. they are considering him in the list. So they have many options. They have also to sell the left back because they have Marcos Alonso and Emerson Palmieri. I think mm -hmm. it's possible Emerson Palmieri will come back to Italy this season. So they are going to sell Emerson Palmieri and to buy a, right, a left back. And Reguillon is an option, but not the first one in this moment. If they can't uh -huh. sign Shieldwood, they will go for Shieldwood. If they can't, they can consider, like I said, Taliafico and the same for, for Reguillon. They are the backup options if Chilwell will be unavailable this summer. Mm. And, and naturally, Fabrizio, as, as an Arsenal fan myself, um, I, 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 can't, I can't not ask the question. And I know that uh, a lot of Arsenal fans will be dying to get an update on the situation of Aubameyang. Of course, we know that, you know, um, we, we have to strengthen in, in, in other areas um, uh, in, in, in our first 11. But I think in terms of priorities, the Aubameyang contract situation is, is, is at the top of that list. So can you shed any light into, into what the, the latest is on, on that? Is, it, is he likely to stay? 
Yes, they are talking. They are talking and it's up to Aubameyang because the contract has been offered from Arsenal to Aubameyang many months ago. So they did what they can for Aubameyang. They offered him an important contract and he's going to decide soon, I think, because also Arteta is working every day trying to convince him. They want him to stay absolutely and they're trying in, in every way. And in this moment, also Aubameyang was waiting, I'm told also because he was considering to see if other top clubs can offer him a contract, like Barcelona if they don't get Lautaro or other clubs. But at the moment, no one made a bid for, for Aubameyang. So the hope of Arsenal is to say, OK, it will pass like one week or two weeks or three weeks and we will see. And he will say, OK, I stay here. I feel the club wants me. The, the manager wants me. I feel important for this club. And that's the hope of Arsenal. But at the moment, he has not another bid. He hopes for mm-hmm. Barcelona. Because if Barcelona will not get Lautaro, and I think it's so difficult to get Lautaro this summer, Mm-hmm. If they don't, they can go on another kind of striker. And Obama Young is absolutely on the list. But at the moment, they didn't do an, any offer to, to Arsenal or to the player. So the hope of the player is Barcelona. But he also considering the possibility of staying at Arsenal because they are doing everything to, to let him stay to the club. So really, as I said, Arteta, all the board of the club, Edu Gaspar, they are calling him like every day, trying to convince him. <laughs> and I think this is important to, from a top club like, like Arsenal to feeling this this important for the club. So mm-hmm. in this moment, there is good possibility, I think, he will stay. Another player being linked with Arsenal is um, Thomas Partey, the Atletico Madrid midfielder. There's conflicting reports. Some people say he's open you know, to the idea of going to Arsenal, that he likes London. And there's other reports saying that he's close to signing a new important contract with Atletico. What's actually happening? I think they are not so conflictual because he's open. He's open to leave Atletico. And this is true because... He's an important player and Premier League is a fantastic championship, so he's, he's an important league, so it's normal that he's considering a move. But what I'm told is so difficult to see him to Arsenal because Arsenal had a contact last week with Atletico Madrid. They spoke between boards and Atletico Madrid said again to Arsenal, they were offering a swap deal, like with Guendouzi, like with other players. And they said, we don't want players, we just want money. He has a release clause. If you want Thomas Partey, you, Arsenal or other clubs, you have to pay 50 million euro. If you, if you want a player, you have to pay the release clause or the player will stay here. And they say, are not conflictual lepers because if the player will not be sold this summer, and that's what Atletico Madrid hope, because as I told you, they want release clause or anything more they will go for another contract for Thomas, this is sure, to, to change the release clause, to give him an important contract also as wage. So he's, he's saying, okay, if someone pays the clause, like Arsenal, I go. If they don't, I stay here and I sign a contract. So I think it's a normal situation when you speak about top players like Thomas is. So we have just to wait to see what Arsenal will decide. At the moment, what Atletico Madrid bold has been told is that Arsenal are not going to pay this, but... As I said, we are just at the start of August and we can say what will happen in September like this. We will see. So just a bit more about Matteo and Guendouzi. What is actually happening there? Because from what I've heard, you know, you know, within people close to the Arsenal camp is that the relationship with him and the manager is pretty much fractured. Is he going to leave Arsenal this summer? I think yes. They are trying to sell him. They are trying to, to do some sort of deals. I think we saw some sort of deals in the transfer market this summer at the start, as we said with, with Juventus and Barcelona, with Pjanic and Artur. And we will see many swap deals during August and during September because clubs are picking, trying to find some agreements, as I told you, for Nombele, as I told you, for Guendouzi. Uh, Guendouzi, in the mentality of Arsenal in this moment, in the project of Arsenal, is a player that they can sell by swap deals because they can find another club who is going to give him an a good player in change of when you see. Is, so, Una, is Una Emery interested in him if he get a bit of uh, For sure he loves him. For sure he loves him. <laughs> but I think it's different to, to get this kind of player. It's so difficult to sign him from for Villarreal. So we will see what will happen. But at the moment there is not there is not a serious option for for going to see. It's Arsenal who is speaking with many clubs and to say, okay, if you want the player, we can find a way for us with deal. But I think it's difficult he will stay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So another thing I wanted to ask is about the managerial situation in Italy between Inter Milan and Juventus. Apparently, Mauricio Sarri's position is a bit precarious. Do you see him still being the manager next season or will Mauricio Pochettino become the manager? At the moment, I think it depends also by the Champions League because for Juventus, the Champions League is so important as always and also this season because they need to do something important in the Champions League. Last year, you know, they had Allegri as manager and they go from the Champions League 
at knockout stage, um, after the knockout stage immediately with, with Ajax and was really disappointed for Juventus. So this summer they wanted important Champions League, they want to go on, they want to go to the final. If Sarri will do something like this, I think he will be the manager of Juventus next season for sure. If they don't, they will consider other options. In this moment, I'm not told they are in talks with Pochettino. So I think there is not an advanced talk with Pochettino, almost ready to be the new Juventus manager. But after the Champions League, we will know what will happen because at the moment you went to start just focusing on the Champions League, not about the manager. Last question for me, Fabrizio. Um, Paul Pogba, you can't speak about a transfer window without you know, the name <laughs> Paul Pogba. Is there going to be any sort of movement? Is he happy at Manchester United? And are Man United looking for a director of football? I think he's so happy to play Champions League. It has been fantastic for him. It was so important for him to play Champions League. He was considering a move this summer. In January, he was thinking, OK, next summer I can move because if we don't play Champions League, I want to play Champions League. But Manchester United get the Champions League, are going to, to pay uh, to speak with, uh, with Mino Raiola again on, on next week, also about his contract. So now Pogba feels something different around Manchester United. It's not like six months ago he wanted to leave. He was speaking with Juventus because Juventus, before the coronavirus, nice is impossible. Now it's really impossible for Juventus to pay 100 million euro for Paul Pogba. But before the coronavirus, Juventus said, OK, after we did a top deal any summer. We did with Cristiano Ronaldo, we did with Matthijs de Ligt. Now, this summer, we want Paul Pogba. But after the coronavirus, it's absolutely impossible. So that's why Paul Pogba understood he was to focus to much on Manchester United. And I think soon he will start to speak with Mino Raiola to, to consider to extend his contract with Manchester United. For sure, Manchester United want to, con- to extend the contract of Paul Pogba. They have to speak. You know, it's never easy when there is Raiola in some deals, like with the Pogba one, because it was important contracts for his, for his players. But for sure, they will speak on next week's, and I think also next month is not happening like tomorrow. We need some time. Another person I wanted to talk about was Wilfred Zaha, the Crystal Palace attacker. There's been rumours saying that he's available for between thirty to forty million pounds. Do you have any idea where he might end up? Sincerely, at this moment, no, because there is not an important club who is going to sign him immediately right now. They are not in advance at all to any club. What you said is true, because for sure the player is ready to leave. He wants another option, another club, so he's considering what will happen on next week, like um, having some bids from, from top clubs. But, but at the moment, there is nothing advanced to, to sign the player in, in these days. So also in this case, we have to wait a bit. But for sure, I think Zaha will be one of the players who will move this summer. Yes. My final one, Fabrizio, is um, uh, a young Brazilian defender that, that's currently uh, playing his trade in, um, in France uh, uh, for Lille, which is uh, uh, Gabriel. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's recently been linked with both Manchester United and also Arsenal. Um, I wondered if you had any, any um, news on that. Is, is, is it likely that we'll see him in the Premier League come next season? Um, the situation, I think, can change in some days because his agents are working to get him out from Lille. And at the moment, what I'm told is that the, the only club who started to speak with Lille about Gabriel is Napoli. Because Napoli are considering to get the player if they will sell Koulibaly this summer. At the moment, there is no official bid an important lever for Koulibaly. So we will see what will happen also for him. But Gabriel Magalhães is their first target if they will sell Koulibaly. About Manchester United, they spoke with his agents. So Manchester United keep um, some info with, with the agents of, of Gabriel and the same did Arsenal some weeks ago. Manchester United did it some days ago. So they are in the race. But at the moment, no one contacted Lille from Manchester United or from Arsenal. We have to see what will happen because it's a crazy deal. It's a strange deal, the Gabriel one. Uh, I can tell you in February, before the virus, Gabriel had medicals with Everton. He was ready to join Everton. Ancelotti wanted him at Everton. So he had medicals. He had an agreement. Everything was done. Then we had the virus in March and everything changed for any club in the world, not just for Everton. And so the situation was, was collapsed because they can pay to little what they ask it. And the same with the player. They, they were in time. So uh, now we have Manchester United speaking with his agent. The same for Arsenal. But the club who started to speak with Lille because Napoli had an important deal with Lille with Victor Osimhen you know, this summer from, from Lille. So they were speaking also about Gabriel, but it will depend by Koulibaly, for sure. Interesting. Another one I wanted to ask about was um, Ay Samandi, the 28-year-old defender from Real Betis. He's been linked with a move to Liverpool. Is that close or is there any truth in that speculation? He's an option because Liverpool, you know, last year during the transfer market, they 
they don't go with um, obsessive transfers. They just go to, to look at the players, to opportunities. He's for sure an opportunity. They are considering him in the list, but there is not an advance in this moment. They need, as I said, to, to consider many options, to consider, because this is Klopp mentality. He doesn't want like 10 players, 10 new players. He just wants to say, okay, we have to sign one or two players, but must be at the right level and perfect for our football. So they are considering him, but in this moment, I won't say, okay, the deal is going to be done soon because they are just considering him. What about Jamal Lewis? The reports came out yesterday. The Norwich um, fullback is, you know, a target for Liverpool. Is yes. That, is still, that something you've heard? Yes, 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 yes. It's reported by Melissa already. He's with yeah, Liverpool. Excellent. So, yes, yes, yes. It's true. He's in a backup, backup option for, for Robertson. They are looking for left back who can be a, a good option as backup for, for Robertson. So, this is an opportunity, yes. He's also in the list of club, as I said before. Um, will, that, will that happen? I think, think it's possible, yes. At the moment, it's not so advanced, but it's, po- it's absolutely possible, yes. Okay, do you see Alexander Lacazette leaving Arsenal as well? Because there's rumours saying that he's top of the list of players that Arteta wants to get rid of. Can you shed any light on that one? He received some bid. I don't know the clubs, to be honest, but he received some bid from, from swap pit deals, as I told you. So many clubs asked to Arsenal if they can do some swap deals with, with Lacazette. I don't know at the moment what were the clubs, but at the moment Arsenal said no, the players can stay here. If, I think it will depend also by Obama Young, because if Obama Young will stay and we sign a new contract, they can consider, okay, we can let Lacazette leave. But at the moment, the situation is stopped. This blockhead, they are just waiting to see what will happen with Obama Young, and then we will, they will decide for, for like I said. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's so been a pleasure. Yeah. It's been an absolute yeah. pleasure, yeah. Fabrizio. Uh, it's been great for us, and we know, I mean, just judging on, on the response that we, we got when we put out the tweet to say that you were coming on the platform, <laughs> we know people are waiting. For, for this episode to okay. come out. Oh, what? Was like, here we <laughs> go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. I hope to say here we go soon for other videos. Um, Fingers crossed. Thank you, thank you. It's been oh, thank you very thank much, Fabrizio. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank and you. keep up the good work. You do we'll a fantastic keep in work. Touch. So we'll keep in touch, definitely. Absolutely. You do All a fantastic right. work and I'm going to follow your work every day. Don't worry. Thank you, Fabrizio. Thank you very much, Fabrizio. Take care. Thank you very much, Fabrizio.